I made a new add-on, and some of the things you can do with it are move a selection while aligning your pivot to something else. You can flatten your geometry based on an imaginary plane. What if you got a new model from the internet, but it's facing the wrong way? With bounding box mode, you can set the origin at the base and fix the orientation. I don't use Maya anymore, but I sometimes still miss their dynamic pivot. But I didn't create Pixie to take its place. I wanted it to do more, so let me show you how it works. To put it simply, Pixie can set a temporary pivot like the 3D cursor, or a more destructive one like the origin. To be fair, Blender has a lot of options for placing and orienting your gizmo. If I wanted to move this geometry but align it to this edge, all I have to do is create a new orientation and then reselect these faces. So not that big of a deal here, but imagine your original selection was something much more complicated. It's kind of silly to have to remake it just because you wanted to rotate your gizmo. But with Pixie, you can align to anything else and never worry about saving your selection or remaking it. And once you're done, if you want to reset your pivot, just double tap the activation key. So how do we use it? Press D to activate, and if you click, you'll place the cursor. You can also simply hold down Shift to align to an element's normal. If you had a gizmo enabled, it's gonna follow your cursor, but this works without gizmos too, if you prefer using Blender's modal transformations. So I can still rotate this face around this point, for example. Rotate X, no gizmos required. If you want to be more precise with your alignment, then you can use the other pivot point modes, or PP modes for short. So this is mode one because we only click once. For mode two, you can either press the two key or you can simply click and drag and it will switch to mode two automatically, which simply means you're placing two alignment points. As you might imagine, mode three gives us the most control because we can click to place, another click to align, and then one final click to give our pivot some additional roll. But note that at any point in time, if you're happy with your gizmo, you can press spacebar and confirm it as it is. Let's go back to this example from the intro. Let's say I want to flatten this geometry. There's a lot of flattening scripts out there, but they're usually going to flatten to the average plane. If I want to define my own plane, we can use Pixie for that. So I want the plane to start here, align here, and for our final click, just make sure you're keeping track of the up axis, in this case it's X. So when I click here, all I have to do is scale X zero, and it aligns to my custom plane. If you try to do the same thing with a gizmo, you'll notice how you can't snap to zero. However, while you're scaling, just tap the zero, and you'll get the exact same result. If you ever want to target the mesh center, simply hover outside of it, and you'll get a little diamond shape to indicate that you're targeting the center. But in this case, it seems to be wrong, and that's because we're simply averaging the vertices to find the center. So I would need to apply my mirror modifier if I wanted the real center. You can also enable the bounding box by holding down the Alt key, or you can press B and simply keep it enabled. Notice that sometimes there is a difference between the bounding box center and the mesh center. If you're so inclined, you can actually combine snapping to the bounding box, for example, and then disabling it and aligning to the mesh. And if you want, you can then re-enable it and snap to it again. If your object happens to have some rotation, you can still use Pixie and press G to change between global or the local bounding box. This also works without a bounding box, by the way. But so far, we've been setting the 3D cursor. We can actually place the origin as well by holding down the control key, or if you want to keep it toggled, you press O for origin. The cool thing about using modifier keys though is that you can combine them. For example, if I want to set the origin at the bottom of this object very quickly, I can hold down Alt, Control, and then just click at the bottom. Boop. There's my new origin. But let's go back to our intro example, because everything we've covered so far in terms of placing the cursor also applies to placing the origin. So we can use our pivot modes, our bounding boxes, and with this character, my rotation is applied, and I might try to go into edit mode and move it, but things might be a little bit slow. And even if I rotate it exactly how I want it to, the origin is still up there, so I still have to finesse things. However, with Pixie Pivot, I can just activate it. I already have my bounding box and origin mode enabled, and I'm gonna click at the base. I wanna set the vertical axis, which is not supposed to be Y, so what can I do in this case? Simply press the Z key, and that will switch your current axis. So I'm gonna click that. And Y is forward, right? Nope, in Blender, forward is actually negative Y. So the Y axis should go backwards. And that's it, my origin is set. I can now clear rotations, clear the location as well, and everything is right with the world. 
Just to reiterate, you can pick what access you're aligning to at any point in time, even if you've already locked in one. For example, Y is set, I can still press Y and then flip them around. So X, Y, or Z, whatever you want. If you ever lose track of what mode you're in or what settings or states are enabled, you can just press the R key and that will reset all of these settings that you see down here to their installation defaults. So this will not reset the entire add-on simply these settings. So you can feel safe about pressing R. Speaking of settings, let's go to our add-on preferences and see what we can change. So if you go to here and then we find Pixie, let's go over some of these sections. So under key maps, we change our activation. So if Pixie doesn't seem to be activating when you're in edit mode, try a different hotkey. I think by default, D is also used by decal machine, for example. So it's up to you to find something that works. We also have a section where we can change what our modifier keys do. And if you happen to use Maya navigation, then just click on this button and you're set. Obviously that disables the alt key for bounding box, but you can set something else to use the bounding box, or you can simply use the sticky toggles, which are also fully customizable. So if you don't like enabling pivot point modes with one, two, and three, you could set it to seven, and eight, nine. If you're like a crazy person and no human prison can hold you, that's something you can do. And if you ever mess up any block of settings, you have individual reset buttons right here. So you don't have to completely disable the add-on and re-enable it just to reset a few settings. We also have appearance. So this is where we set our colors, our scaling, and some other options. If you don't like that Pixie is using your theme colors, you can disable that and set your own custom colors. But as you can see, not everything you tweak here will appear while Pixie is running. So you might have to restart it for the changes to appear. If pre-selection highlighting is giving you seizures, then you can just disable that right here and now you'll only get little dots. I'm not gonna go over every single color. Let's go to scaling. If you feel that Pixie is too small, you can just increase the scale right here. But as I've said before, not every setting is going to update. So the size is working, but the thickness of the lines are not. So I need to just restart it. And if you ever mess things up, just reset. <laughs> and restart. And once you're more familiar with the add-on, you can even disable the fixed HUD so it's not there all the time or just change its location. The last section is behavior, but I just wanna make something really clear. When Pixie is running, the modifier keys are temporary. So if I hold down Alt for bounding box and then I just place my cursor, next time I enable Pixie again, there will be no bounding box because modifiers are temporary. However, if I press B, which is the sticky toggle for the bounding box, it's not only gonna be enabled the next time we activate Pixie, but it will still be there the next time we restart Blender and activate Pixie. If you don't like that Pixie remembers these sticky toggles, you can disable this button right here, and that will give her amnesia. So with the setting disabled, you can now set any values that you want Pixie to always start with, no matter what you enabled or what you pressed. There are some secret keys you can use to adjust the size of your pivot without going to the preference for example, numpad plus to make it bigger, numpad minus to make it smaller. Oh, look at this little thing. The numpad asterisk to reset. I think that is everything we can do, but there are a few things we cannot do, at least not at this point in time. For example, Pixie only works with one object at a time. The reason I was able to set a new origin for this character and a new orientation is because I merged all of the individual pieces. So another thing to know is that I didn't originally design this to work on sculpted characters. So this is only 1.7 million triangles, not that bad. But if you have a 30 million triangle or something ridiculous like that, Pixie is gonna take a while to start up because it needs to generate the, I'll just call it snapping data. But yeah, you can only snap to one object at a time. So I can't just enable this and try to snap over here. Another thing you might have noticed is that when we're snapping to the bounding box, even though it appears as wireframe, it really isn't. So if we try to target the base, this face is always gonna get in the way. So we need to rotate just so we can snap to the face. In the future, I would like to support select through, at least for this wireframe bounding box, but I don't have that now. Like I already said, focus on what it can do at this point in time. Also, Pixie does not run in object mode, only edit mode. But honestly, this would be one of the easier things to add. I just don't know if it makes sense, but what do you think? That is all I got for now. But if you have any ideas or feature requests, make sure to put them in the comments so I can ignore them. And if it's a really bad idea, you're reported. Nah, I'm just kidding. Or am I? <laughs>